Hey, everybody. I just want to, uh, there are a couple of us who will have a few words to say, but um, I'm Tom Wolf, governor of Pennsylvania, and I uh, came here to, to show that the people of Pennsylvania uh, are concerned uh, for what's happening here and, and concerned for the safety and welfare of the folks here. Uh, and I, I got to say, I'm really impressed with what the local emergency responders have been doing and starting talking with, with Bob Walls back here starting at 5 uh, o'clock this morning. Uh, uh, people have banded together, come together to, to uh, make sure that people are safe uh, and that everything is being done to, to help the folks. Um, I came, when I got here, I went out to talk to some of the, the folks who had been affected in, in the church, Pastor Stevie's church. Pastor Stevie, by the way, is pa Pastor Stevie's right here. And thank you for, for you know, showing such a great face of, of compassion for the folks here. But by the time I got here, most of the thousand people who have been resettled and, and transferred to other places had already left. Uh, and either in motels or hotels or with friends, uh, there is a, an animal uh, shelter that, that has offered to put up pets for two days for free. The community is really banded together, and I, I really, really appreciate that. But I especially want to thank Pastor Stevie, Bob Walls, who is the Heinemann Emergency Coordinator. Bob, thank you. Uh, and we have a number of people here. just want to say a, a, a few words, but the, the, the concern is uh, for the safety and welfare of the people of Heinemann and to make sure that, that we're doing everything we can at the state level to help the good work that's going on at the, at the local level. So let me turn it over to the the director of the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, Rick Flynn. Rick. Governor, thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. And I, I'll tell you that, and uh, again, from our perspective, we certainly are concerned about the folks that, that have been displaced and, 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 and we know that uh, they're being taken care of. But I will tell you from a Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency perspective, our role is to support the county. And uh, County uh, Director Dave Cubinson is here. That's our, our role is to support whatever he needs. We've gone ahead and activated our Commonwealth Response Coordination Center early on this morning when we first got the call. We brought in state agencies uh, and, and, and everything from PennDOT, the Department of Health, Department of Human Services, um, Department of Environmental Protection, all heavily engaged at, in Harrisburg, but also have uh, resources and assets on the ground. We brought our satellite trucks in and our uh, area office staff in uh, to, to support. South Central Task Force brought in their incident management team. They're going to start working. We brought our state incident management team into support of them. So again, it's a collective effort, but as the governor said, our number one concern is the safety and, uh, uh, and, and making sure that this thing goes smoothly. And so we're working very closely with the local officials to make sure that happened. I'd like to turn that over now to uh, uh, Josh Lang, who's the county, uh, the chair of the Co Bedford County Commissioners. Josh. Thank you. Thanks. Sir. Appreciate it. First, let me just say by mentioning uh, today was an unfortunate incident, and uh, my, my thoughts and prayers are with the families of all those that are affected. Uh, I'm proud to, to live in a county where the community does come together uh, to assist those families in need. I've had a few different situations where we've had to uh, band together as a community under emergency situations, and I can honestly say that our 911 EMS, EMS here in Hyman, the church opening up their doors, uh, the volunteers with the American Red Cross, Salvation Army, and I'm sure I'm missing a lot, but there's a lot of people that came together today to support those families, and I appreciate the updates we've been getting um, from the county perspective, and we're going to work to make these families whole again, and again, my thoughts and prayers are, are with them at this time, and I know it's, uh, it's not an easy thing for them to be dealing with, I'm sure. I'll turn it over to my colleague, Commissioner Barry Dallaire. Thank you, Josh. Uh, I was here at 1130 today, quarter to 12, when we got informed that we needed to leave the school and move away from the community because there was a lot of concern about the uh, freight car that was on fire. I was truly amazed at the efficiency of moving over a thousand people out of their homes. Uh, we have 450 structures in Hindman Borough. We have another 18 on the hillside uh, of the township. Uh, everybody was relocated and uh, we're just very grateful for that. And I would just tell you that we've talked for a long time about the need for cell service in Heinemann. Hopefully the microscope that's being put on this event will help us get cell service in Heinemann for a safety reason for, for none other. And uh, we just thank the good Lord everybody's safe. 
Uh, I'm going to introduce Senator Langerholtz, who has been here and been very supportive all day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and get, let me just echo those comments uh, by Commissioner Dallara. Thank God no one was injured in this. And uh, I want to thank all the first responders uh, across all levels, from local, state to federal. Thank the governor for, for being here and offering his support. And it's really a testament to the, the close-knitness of this community and how mo so many people were able to come together and really provide for all different levels to, to make sure that the, this displacement this goes smoothly. Uh, and I would ask that, that everyone continue to keep those first responders in their prayers because there's still a long way to go here. Uh, we thank God that not, no one was injured. I heard someone, overheard someone saying here while I was, you know, touring the facility here that, you know, property can be replaced, but human lives cannot. So we're very thankful. Uh, we know that there's still a long way to go, and, and there's still the first responders will be putting themselves in harm's way. So we ask you to, to please can keep them in your prayers. Thank you. Okay, now all, all of us are happy to open this up to questions. As far as you, what are some of the immediate assets? Obviously, there's a lot right now that you can bring to bear to alleviate the situation from the first responders aspect to the many people here who are, as you said before, apparently doing what they do in South Central Pennsylvania is take care of themselves. Right. Well, I, as, as I said, we're in a support role. This was a, 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 a derailment of a train that had some uh, uh, nasty substances in, in the cars, uh, but the, the response on the part of the local responders uh, and, and CSX has, has been uh, tremendous. What we're doing, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency is here, that's Rick Flynn, PennDOT is here, the Pennsylvania State Police, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, and, and we're here to, to play uh, whatever supporting role we can play to, to make sure that, that uh, people are safe and, and uh, we will continue to do that. But again, we're in support of what's going on at the local level, whether it's the county, the Hindman, um, uh, or the nonprofits, the, the, the charitable world here in, in Hindman. We're, we're, we will do whatever we can and whatever we need to do to help them make sure that the folks here are safe. Yes. Are yeah. you aware uh, if this train had traveled through the Pittsburgh area on its way to New York? I don't know that. That's a question you need to ask CSX. Yes. Uh, the commissioner mentions about the need for cell service in the area. Is that something that could be helpful on the state level of making that happen? The senator and I talked about that, and, and we'll be talking about that further. I, d I don't know. Uh, this, this is the first uh, before we we came out here we talked about that and, and uh, we both agreed that we will uh, do what we can to see if there is something that we can do at the state level how did that hinder the evacuation having no cell phone uh, service uh, do you Bob do you want to talk about that uh, I can if you would like to see sure let me introduce Bob Walls he could probably answer that better than anybody you heard the well, question well, was about how did that hinder the how evacuation hinder, yeah um, it, it actually did uh, hinder to some extent, uh, we do have a, uh, a one-call system that goes out to all the residents in the borough itself. Uh, we were able to issue three warnings out of it in time to get uh, uh, three quarters of the town evacuated through that system. Uh, a lot of people depend on the landlines there because there is no cell service, so uh, that worked fairly well. We were still able to go door to door with fire and EMS and the state police. And we did, uh, like I said, with the one-call system and going door to door, we were, we were able to get everybody out in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so it went very well, even though we had some complications. By complications, yes, it would be easier if we did have cell service. I think that's it. Would be easier if we had cell cell service here. I, I think he might be able to answer my question too. We were just sort of wondering. Uh, we had heard that there were residents who did not want to leave their homes. Are there still some left? There were a few that did not leave, even though we tried to persuade them several times, even the state police. Uh, but we did take down their names and uh, their ages and their. Uh, residents number so that we know that that where they're at and if they're still there that we know where to look to rate the danger in this location at this time what would you say that is I mean because we've got first responders down there we've got people obviously still in their homes so how much danger are they in it's still a very high level uh, risk right now uh, we do have uh, one of our engine crews and an ambulance crew actually in the town right now supporting the hazmat team from CSX 
a number on exactly how many residents are still in town? Um, as a last count, we had maybe six that stayed. At one point during the early, maybe after 12 o'clock, there were a state police helicopter flying over. <laughs> there was apparently at some point, I believe five individuals who were, for lack of a better word, taken from the scene for what's called decontamination. All right, I'll wait till our, okay. our good friends uh, move on there. Okay. Speaking of cell phones, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> At one point, it seemed that there were five individuals, we understand, that were taken from in and around the area to a decontamination area as a precautionary measure. Is there a decontamination area set up anywhere? Not at this time, no. Okay, so we're not dealing with no. those kind of chemicals at this mm -hmm. juncture. No. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, again, my greatest appreciation, gratitude to the, all the folks, the volunteers who have come together to help keep the people of Heinemann safe. Thank you very much.